I discovered that my husband had been deceitful, engaging in an act of deception that took me by surprise. But what made it even more shocking was the identity of the person he was involved with. Someone he should never have been in a relationship with. I felt the need to share my pain and confusion anonymously. Hence this throwaway account. My primary objective is to seek your opinions and hear if anyone has experienced something similar, as I still find it hard to believe it happened to me. Allow me to provide some background information. I'm a 30-year-old woman who has been married for over five years. Our marriage hasn't always been smooth, but we've somehow managed to make it work. My husband isn't the easiest person to get along with, and my family has never been fond of him, although his what remained perplexing to me was his exceptionally close relationship with this stepsister, in contrast to his relationship with his other step-sibling. One busy summer day, I was visiting my best friend, Lauren, who had invited me for lunch while my husband was out of town for the weekend. As we caught up, Lauren inquired about how things were going with William. I told her everything was fine, but she raised an eyebrow and urged me to be completely honest. I insisted that I was, which prompted her to ask whether he had gone out of town with my sister-in-law. I replied negatively, explaining that he was away on a business trip. Lauren's expression shifted slightly, and she then showed me my sister-in-law's Instagram page, which displayed a photo of her and my husband at a wine tasting event from the previous night. I couldn't believe my eyes, and to cope with the shock, I ordered another glass of wine, desperately trying to comprehend why my husband would lie to me. After all, he had always been forthright about his trips with his sister, so why conceal this one? Lauren could sense my distress, but I decided to feign composure to avoid her unfounded suspicions. Nevertheless, she persisted in questioning whether I found it strange or suspicious how close my husband and his stepsister were, reminding me that they weren't blood relatives and were only connected through their parents' legal union. She had brought up this topic before, and I had never understood why she was so fixated on it since I believed there was nothing wrong with siblings being close. I suggested changing the topic of conversation as I headed home, unable to shake the fact that my husband had deceived me about his supposed business trip. The following day, when my husband returned home, I wasted no time in asking him about his sister's social media post. His response was a laugh, and he told me to stop overthinking things, claiming that the picture was old. I felt compelled to believe him, particularly because his sister had blocked me on all her social media accounts. To further reassure me, he showed me a work email confirming his business trip. I apologized for my doubts, and he embraced me, vowing that he would never lie to me. He then switched the subject, inquiring about the mortgage payments. I assured him that everything was on track, and by the end of the year, the house would officially be ours. His unexpected affection surprised me, as he was not typically demonstrative. He expressed his appreciation for my financial contributions towards our future, as he had initially made the down payment for the house when he was a supervisor at his previous job. Unfortunately, he had since been fired and had to accept a lower paying position. Due to my substantial income and a recent inheritance from my grandfather's estate, I had taken on the mortgage payments. He then revealed that he had added my name to the deed, making me a co-owner of the house. As I prepared dinner, my sister-in-law entered our home. She greeted my husband and, as usual, ignored me. This time, my husband intervened and insisted that she greet me. She reluctantly said hello and, when asked, agreed to stay for dinner. During the meal, I noticed my husband defending me against his sister's snide remarks. He repeatedly asked her to stop being rude and eventually snapped at her, warning her to cease her childish behavior or leave. It was a shocking moment as I had never witnessed my husband raise his voice at his sister before. Once my sister-in-law departed, 
I expressed my gratitude to my husband for standing up for me. He confessed that he hadn't realized how disrespectful she had been to me and promised to do better. After thanking him, I went to clean the kitchen. A short while later, he entered the kitchen with an unexpected surprise. He suggested an international trip for the upcoming Christmas holidays, rather than spending it exclusively with him. Thrilled, I agreed, and he asked me to research and choose the destination. I planted a kiss on my husband's cheek, expressing my excitement for the upcoming trip. The last time we had traveled together was on our honeymoon, which felt like ages ago. This trip was something I eagerly anticipated, thinking it would be a refreshing change for both of us. Little did I know that it was all part of a secretive plan. A few days had passed since my husband proposed the idea of a destination trip for the Christmas holidays. His affectionate and attentive behavior during this time lifted my spirits. After finishing my night shift at the hospital and finding no patients to attend to, I decided to surprise my husband with breakfast before he left for work. Upon reaching home, it seemed he had already gone. I ventured into his office, a place he had always deemed off limits, citing it as his private sanctuary, or as he put it, his man cave. Despite his warnings, I started tidying up the cluttered space. While cleaning, I accidentally stumbled upon an envelope. Despite my initial hesitance, curiosity got the better of me and I opened it. To my shock and dismay, I found the last will and testament of my husband, William King. In the will, he had left the house I had been solely paying for over the past three years to his sister. I couldn't fathom why he would do such a thing, especially considering it was our home shared by husband and wife. Intrigued, I delved deeper into the envelope and discovered the deed to the house. To my disbelief, it stated that my husband was the sole owner, contradicting his promise to add my name once I took over the mortgage payments. I initially thought it might be an outdated document, but the date at the bottom confirmed it was newly updated. The realization hit me, he had never added me to the deed. I wondered why he would deceive me about something so significant and, more importantly, why he intended to leave our entire home to his sister, as if she were financially dependent. I decided to document the evidence by taking pictures of the documents. My plan was to consult Lauren, who happened to be an attorney, for legal advice. I resolved not to confront my husband until I had all the necessary facts ensuring my cover remained intact. I made every effort to restore everything to its original state, erasing any trace of my presence. Several more days passed, during which I forwarded the document pictures to Lauren, who had promised to investigate further. Confirming the details was crucial before making my next move. My mind had been consumed by the question of whether my sister-in-law was aware of the situation. I harbored doubts about her involvement, thinking that my husband might have intended to leave her the house as a safety net. While that notion was sweet, he had made these significant decisions without discussing them with me, which raised my suspicion. One night as we slept, I seized the opportunity to examine my husband's phone. His deep slumber allowed me to access his chats with his sister, and what I discovered left me utterly shocked disgusted, and heartbroken. Their conversations were filled with flirtatious messages and highly inappropriate pictures, which no married man should be sending or receiving, especially not from his sister. Furthermore, I learned that he had indeed been out of town with his sister, contrary to his claim that the Instagram picture was old. Going out of town together seemed to be their way of pursuing their illicit affair. The revulsion and nausea overwhelmed me, and although I longed to confront him, I knew it was not the right moment. Before returning his phone, I discreetly took screenshots of their conversations, sending them to myself. I deleted the evidence to ensure he wouldn't suspect that I had discovered the truth. 
Unable to bear the thought of sleeping next to him, knowing what I now knew, I left the house and drove to Lauren's place. Tears streamed down my cheeks, and my heart felt unbearably heavy. I was broken-hearted and felt utterly betrayed by the man I had loved and devoted over five years of my life to. Even my own family did not like him, finding him too rude and mean. Their disapproval made it challenging to visit them, but I had made numerous sacrifices for him, only to be repaid with deceit and his affair with his stepsister, an act that left me feeling sick to my stomach. Upon arriving at Lauren's, I was distraught and needed her assistance to get inside. After a flood of tears and some time to regain my composure, I explained everything to her. She remained silent for a moment, and I asked her what was on her mind. With a deep breath, she confessed that she had long suspected such a situation and had tried to warn me. It often seemed like I had been determined to see only the best in my husband, even when the evidence pointed elsewhere. My tears welled up once more, as Lauren's words resonated with a painful truth. She had always been suspicious of the close relationship between my husband and his stepsister, especially considering his strained ties with his other step-siblings. He had claimed they were toxic and filled with drama, which struck me as odd, given that his own sister exhibited similar traits yet enjoyed a close bond with him. I eventually managed to halt my tears and told Lauren that I wouldn't allow my husband to escape without facing the consequences of his actions. I expressed my desire for revenge, emphasizing that both my husband and sister-in-law needed to be held accountable. Lauren agreed to assist me with my plan, and I was determined not to let them get away with mistreating me. In the following days, I stayed at Lauren's house informing my husband that I was occupied with a community project, a ruse he bought into, probably viewing it as an opportunity to continue his affair with his sister. Meanwhile, I consulted with lawyers to ensure I handled the situation legally without leaving any loopholes for my husband. This plan needed to be airtight for my revenge to be truly satisfying. Before returning home, I visited the bank and removed myself from the mortgage responsibility. The bank employee cautioned me that foreclosure could result from missed payments, to which I responded with a nod and a fake smile. My feigned ignorance was a necessary part of my scheme, one of the most challenging acts I had to put on. With my sister-in-law's reduced visits to our house, my pretense became more manageable. Her absence worked in my favor, as her presence could have triggered an emotional outburst, jeopardizing my plan. Several months passed, during which I discovered that I was pregnant. It was still in the early stages, as I had slept with my husband as a precaution to avoid arousing suspicion. This pregnancy was unexpected but welcome, even though my husband had previously expressed a disinterest in having children. This was not how I envisioned starting a family with him. One cold day, I sat in the living room when my husband stormed in, wearing a malicious smirk. His words were hurtful, but I was not surprised. He announced that he wanted a divorce and demanded that I vacate his house by the end of the day. He believed I had made the final mortgage payment, and the grin on his face reflected this assumption. He hurled insults at me, criticizing my supposed lack of backbone and character, contending that I was a weak and useless woman who allowed others to take advantage of me. He claimed he needed someone stronger, insinuating that it was his sister. I remained calm, sipping on my hot chocolate, which bewildered him. I asked if the strong woman he sought was his sister, which immediately unsettled him. He asked what I meant, and I laughed before informing him that I knew about his immoral affair with his stepsister. He dismissed my claims as delusional, insulting me in the process. Suddenly, his stepsister entered the room, leaving me in shock. She was visibly pregnant, her belly showing about five or six months. It all became clear. Her absence was due to her pregnancy. 
and I strongly suspected it was my husband's child. She glared at me and ordered me to leave the house, explaining that her brother was leaving the house to her and expressing her happiness that he was divorcing me. I calmly questioned my sister-in-law if her happiness stemmed from the fact that my husband's divorce meant he could now marry her. Her face froze and she glanced at my husband, her fear palpable. I revealed that I had known about their affair all along, just waiting for the right moment to expose them. She let out a scream, and I requested her to keep calm, reminding her that her outburst could distress both our unborn children. They stared at me in disbelief, my sister-in-law seething with anger. She lashed out at my husband, accusing him of being a liar and untrustworthy. My husband, taken aback, claimed it was the first he had heard of my allegations. To prove him wrong, I showed them an ultrasound scan from a few days ago. His face turned pale, and my sister-in-law was furious. He confessed that their plan had worked and urged her not to let it change their arrangement. He insisted the house was theirs, and he was still evicting me. I laughed, dismissing his feeble attempts at intimidation. He confessed that his recent affection had been part of a ploy to ensure I finished paying the mortgage. Amidst his revelations, I revealed that the house was in foreclosure and had been officially sold. They stared at me in disbelief. He argued that the house was in his name, but I pointed out the six months of missed payments. I found their disbelief amusing, stating I had removed my bank account the moment I discovered their scheme and affair. My sister-in-law attempted to attack me, but I restrained her, reminding her that her pregnancy saved her from a beating. In a fit of rage, my husband admitted he had never loved me and only married me for my inheritance. His words shattered my already broken heart, realizing I had wasted eight years of my life on a man who never cared for me. Without remorse, I posted all the screenshots and pictures I had saved from his phone on social media, exposing their affair to the world. Both froze in horror, but I felt no sympathy for them. They deserved every consequence coming their way. My sister-in-law, in her pregnant state, tried to attack me, but my husband restrained her. They disappeared while I packed my belongings. Lauren arrived to pick me up, and we left for her place, where I would be staying for the next few weeks. During the drive, my phone was flooded with calls and texts from concerned family members, all inquiring about what I had just revealed on social media. I made the decision to switch off my phone. This was not my mess to deal with. It was my husband and stepsister's mess. Update number three. Hey, everyone, it's time for the final update. A couple of months have passed since that eventful morning of revenge. I'm currently six months pregnant with a baby girl, which I'm incredibly excited about. I've moved into my own apartment now I've also initiated a divorce because a few days later, my husband came to my workplace, begging me to fix things with him. He admitted his mistake, blaming it all on his stepsister, who had seduced him and convinced him their affair was acceptable since they weren't blood related. He tried to explain his actions, but I saw it all as mere excuses. I knew he was desperate because he couldn't maintain his lifestyle without me. Of course, I didn't take him back. He was never good enough for me in the first place. The house was eventually sold, which I was relieved about. My soon-to-be ex-husband moved to a different town, thoroughly embarrassed by everything. He disappeared, deleting all his social media accounts and changing his number, as I found out during our divorce trial. I have no idea how he's doing, and frankly, I don't care. I never want to see him again. My ex-sister-in-law tried to apologize, but I refused to accept it because it didn't feel genuine. She has given birth to a baby boy, but due to my ex-husband's disappearance, she hasn't heard from him in months. He even missed the birth of his own child. She's going through a rough time as her family cut her off upon learning about the affair. 
That's the consequence of mistreating people and committing such terrible acts. Fortunately, I have reconnected with my family, and they were thrilled about my decision to divorce my husband. Everything is finally going well for me, although it hasn't been easy. I did love my ex-husband deeply, so getting over him was incredibly challenging. I don't think I'm fully over him yet, but I'll get there eventually. Part of me feels guilty that my revenge plan made my ex-husband disappear and caused my sister-in-law's family to cut ties with her. Perhaps I went too far by exposing their affair publicly. Maybe I should have just stuck to making him lose the house. But it's too late now. What's done is done. And there's no going back. It seemed like many commenters were upset about my decision to expose the relationship between my cheating ex and his stepsister. In my opinion, I don't understand why they were so upset. If they put themselves in my position and considered the betrayal I experienced, being used not only for the mortgage, but also for a fake image while my husband had an affair with his stepsister. I don't think what I did was too extreme. Let's be real. What would you do? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your perspective. Also, if you're new to the channel, I'm Mr. Rito, and I narrate these stories every day. If you want to be part of these dramatic stories, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day and remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.